sonora Vestida con el mar de Cozumel Con el color del sol por todo el cuerpo Así se lleva México en la piel Como el buen tequila de esta tierra O como un amigo en Yucatán Por la natejía en Teotitlán Así se siente México, así se siente México Así como los labios por la piel Así te envuelve México, así te sabe México Así se lleva México en la piel la sierra de Chihuahua o la artesanía en San Miguel remontar el cerro de la silla si se lleva a México en la piel como acompañarse con mariachi para hacer llorar a esa canción en el sur se toca con marimba y en el norte con acordeón. Así se siente México, así se siente México, así como unos labios por la piel. Así te envuelve México, así te sabe México, así se lleva México en la piel. Buen sarape de Saltillo, como bienvenida en Veracruz, la emoción de un beso frente a frente, así se lleva México en la piel, como contemplar el mar Caribe, descubrir un bello amanecer, tener la fresca brisa de Acariciando a una mujer Así se siente México Así se siente México Así como unos labios por la piel Así te envuelve México Así te sabe México Así se lleva México en la Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We hope that you are doing fine. Uh, we're pleased to ask you to turn off your video and your microphones to have a better reception for this session. At the end of each part of this meeting, we will have a question and answer session. So feel free to write your question in the chat to have it ready. On behalf of Tecnológico de Monterrey School of Medicine and Health Sciences, we give you a warmest welcome to U21 Health Sciences Group Annual Meeting 2021, Prevention, Wellbeing and Longevity, Introducing the Cultural Activities. This time we will have Mexican muralism. To begin, I am going to introduce our speaker. She is Lisette Saldiva. As she has a bachelor's degree in visual arts at the National School of Plastic Arts of the UNAM. That's the National University in Mexico. A master in art history at the Faculty of Philosophy and Letters of the UNAM, the same institution. She has been dedicated to the implementation and management of artistic and educational projects in museum in IMBA. That's the National Institute of Arts for over 10 years and in research, academic work and project manager of art exhibitions. Her art has been exhibited individually and collectively in Mexico, Spain, Argentina, Colombia, and the Czech Republic. Well, we give a warmest welcome to Lisette to start this presentation. 
Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all the important guild of medicine and health sciences, colleagues and lovers of culture. Welcome uh, to this event in which we will have the opportunity to learn a bit uh, of the art history of Mexico. My name is Isabel Saldiva Larañaga. I am a visual artist who has developed in the field of museums and research and educational communication, art history and museology. Currently, I am the leader of artistic heritage within the National Head Office of Cultural Heritage of Tecnológico Monterrey. And, um, well, we're going to uh, talk about these two main topics. Uh, the origin of a legacy, the mural of a uh, directory building at Campus Monterrey. And a second mural we're going to see is the case of a mural artwork rescue, the history of medicine painted by Jose Reyes Mesa. Um, so let's, I, I would like to begin with this uh, first mural and a little bit of the context of the time about muralism. Um, as you know, Mexican muralism uh, is the vanguard uh, until now that uh, Mexico has uh, given to the hegemonic art history. However, and despite the international recognition of some of these Mexican painters, Many of these artists are not that famous right now, and sometimes they are a bit forgotten, and they haven't been that much uh, um, uh, shown, let's say, uh, uh, between even between uh, uh, the Mexican museums. No, and um, sometimes uh, we can attend a government, a government building, a church, university, or a hospital a lobby of a corporate building and sometimes we even notice <clears throat> we don't even notice the the murals that decorate them um, this muralist movement uh, emerged in a troubled time in mexico uh, when we were just emerging from a mexican revolution uh, that began in 1910 and then ended at the dawn of the 20th uh, uh, at the 20s uh, of that century it was a decade uh, when the revolution was conceived um, and uh, the actual uh, revolution was a cultural and educational revolution that the government uh, organized through this Ministry of Public uh, Instruction. Um, and a nationwide literacy program was designed uh, that uh, went hand by hand with the um, symbolic construction of an identity. Uh, here in this uh, slide, we can see at the top, um, let me use this. This guy here is like the, the, the key to understand this movement. Uh, Jose Vasconcelos was the um, ministry um, uh, that uh, was in charge of uh, education at that, at that time. So uh, he uh, invited artists uh, to create and to co-create co the imaginary of what was Mexico. And um, these artists sought to con consolidate the social ideals created in the revolution, highlighting nationalism within their art. This other man that is besides uh, um, Jose Vasconcelos is Diego Rivera. These three guys are Jose, um, David Alfaro Siqueiros, uh, Jose Clemente Orozco, and Diego Rivera. These three were called, were so called the three big artists, the, Los Tres Grandes, the three big, the great three uh, painters, uh, which uh, were making lots of murals for uh, government buildings in order to achieve this idea of um, 
translating into the people that didn't know how to read but understand images uh, about their own history, about their the, about themselves, and about the ideals of the moment, which were obviously um, in many in many ways uh, was communist. No, uh, here we can see uh, David Alfaro Siqueiros, which was a very um, important artist, but he was really into the politics, and uh, he was at uh, in jail many times. Uh, because of his uh, extremist uh, way of uh, understanding politics. And uh, well, obviously, he was uh, really um, into making a change of way of thinking uh, through communist communism. Here we can see Diego Rivera with his uh, fist, uh, raising his fist uh, with uh, uh, Frida Kahlo too. No? They were like the most famous artists at that time. Um, but well, as, as, as I told you, uh, with the Secretary of Education or the Ministry of Education at that time, they were making a campaign of um, in showing people through art uh, a way of understanding um, the country, let's say, no? and the change. Um, here we can see this mural of Jose Clemente Orozco. Um, Jose Clemente Orozco uh, is one of these great three, and um, is, uh, this is one of his most important murals that uh, was made uh, in the uh, Fine Arts uh, Museum Palace uh, of, in Mexico City. Uh, he uh, created this mural in 1934 uh, when uh, the first world war has uh, was finished and uh, he actually um, was trying to show how uh, this uh, concept of uh, machines and development somehow is destroying human humanity at the same time he is like a, a, a completely different posture uh, comparing it to Diego Rivera and Siqueiros. They are uh, conceiving progress as the way of changing and in a, in a state of hope. And uh, Jose Clemente Rosco doesn't see it that way. He sees it uh, in a completely different. He, he, he sees progress uh, using this uh, concept of machine and uh, um, war know somehow and uh, capitalism which is this symbol that it's being opened here as if it was the pandora box that uh, uh, opened all of these uh, problems that was living uh, humanity at that moment so this is one way of understanding uh, muralism uh, jose clemente Orozco, even though uh, he was thinking in another way than the others. He uh, was uh, completely committed to making these murals in order to, to try to uh, uh, show a way of um, connecting with, uh, with the people. You know? And obviously the murals were a way because uh, they were always in where people were. And um, in this case, for example, this is another mural that he made for the um, teacher school, the National Teacher School, uh, National School of Teachers, sorry, uh, in Mexico City, where, where he um, made this uh, mural uh, asked by Mario Pani, which was the architect of these uh, magnificent buildings. Uh, his, uh, Mario Pani was another component of this uh, movement of muralism because he was the in charge of <clears throat> making many of these projects the uh, architectonical projects and uh, he um, asked many of these artists to make murals for uh, these buildings and we're going to see another example that uh, of muralism this mural was made uh, well another characteristic of this uh, artist is that uh, they were uh, traveling between United States, Mexico, and sometimes Latin America, especially Chile, 
or Argentina. And uh, Diego Rivera uh, went to, to United States. Actually, he uh, won the competition be between Picasso and uh, Matisse in order to make this mural in the Rockefeller Center. Um, this mural uh, represented his uh, conception about that moment of progress, and he was trying to present uh, his um, concepts of uh, this man in the middle uh, trying to uh, organize and control the universe. But uh, as he was a communist and he was Leninist, uh, he decided to paint in one side of this mural um, this uh, face of Lenin. And actually, it was over here. No, you, you cannot see it in this picture because this is the original picture that was made in uh, Rockefeller Center. And um, well, he, after uh, make, after painting this face uh, of Lenin, uh, was called by uh, Rockefeller and told him that. Uh, that, that he should erase the, the face of Lenin, but he actually decided not to do it. Uh, he refused to do it. Uh, then Rockefeller uh, finished the, the, to pay him the last part of the of the agreement of uh, by the by making this painting. And a few may, months later, they decided to destroy the complete mural. Uh, Diego Rivera obviously was completely uh, angry, and when he came back to Mexico, he decided to paint this mural uh, that was being asked by uh, the, the president of that time, Lázaro Cárdenas, to make this mural in the Palacio de Bellas Artes or the um, Palace of Fine Arts Museum in Mexico City. Actually, this mural is uh, uh, was, was made at the same time as uh, José Clemente Orozco did the first one, which was Catarsis, this one. No? This, the, these murals are opposed to uh, each other uh, in, this, in the same building. So you can see in one hand the Diego Rivera's built uh, painting and on the other uh, the, the Jose Clemente Orozco painting. They were made at the same time. Actually, the one that finished first was Jose Clemente Orozco. He was less purist uh, of uh, the, the act of painting. He painted a little bit more, um, uh, let's say, uh, loosened. No, not, not so organized and structured as Diego Rivera did. Diego Rivera, it's a complete um, obsessive of um, the structure and, and the sense of the content that he wanted to present in each of the figures that he painted here. He painted this mural in the old technique of fresco and uh, um, Jose Clemente Orozco painted the mural in uh, an acrylic technique, which was more uh, actual or more modern, let's say. And uh, the, the main difference between these two techniques is, is that the fresco is sealed perfectly in the place it was uh, painted, and the other uh, has been have, uh, had a little bit of cracks and uh, is not that well um achieved let's say technically no but uh, well uh, it's a completely way dif a dif completely different way of understanding and representing things in this case um uh, as i told you Diego Rivera is a little bit more um in love let's say of progress and the, the way of uh, uh, understanding change uh, through technology through um science uh, and well, here in this mural that it's in a, a national uh, institution in Mexico, he uh, painted again the face of Lenin. You now that is here. Uh, here he decided to again the the man controlling universe, which is um, a, a worker. You no, know, this traditional concept of the worker for uh, the communism. Uh, it's like the leading way of ch making the change no through um, industry and technology so he's controlling this macro universe and this micro universe and um, and well here this in this side we can see um all this uh, russian communists and these ideals are a political way of understanding and thinking and here is the um 
the people that were making the changes through science, for example, this is Darwin and this is his theory of uh, evolution of species. And um, these students that are looking through this lens, uh, what is happening here in the middle, this represents, this, this, he's opposing these two sides uh, or these two concepts of, um, of uh, that time that he was living. Uh, here he is uh, representing these uh, rich people that are being in this capsule, uh, having a party, and these uh, students learning through this big lens all what is happening here. No, they are trying to understand what is happening in science or in the micro and the macro universe and politics and people starving here. Uh, this 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 uh, mural was was done. Uh, during the time that was a, the big depression in the United States. So he is representing here riots and people that is, are starving and are looking through this uh, window, let's say, uh, rich people having fun. And um, here he represented Lenin uh, joining the uh, hands of different people from different races. And um, at this time, well, he was very idealistic no? uh, of what was, uh, his uh, way of understanding uh, that moment. And in the same building, uh, I am talking about this building that it's very important for us because it's the representation of culture and this symbolic uh, ideals of uh, the top uh, concepts of art in Mexico. Uh, it's the Fine Arts Museum Palace, which is the symbol of culture for us in Mexico. And here we have this mural of uh, David Alfaro Siqueiros, David Alfaro Siqueiros uh, in this picture is um, showing how he decided to organize structurally this mural. He is one of the muralists that uh, intended to be more revolutionary in, in terms of um, practicing with, with new techniques, with new materials of, the, of his time. He, used, he was the, one of the first uh, artists that used uh, projections with uh, this um, um, technology of the time that projected the image in order to draw it. And he used photography, a lot of photography, in order to uh, um, uh, say, um, use the, um, the, the projection uh, of, of, the, of the bodies or the uh, hands of the, or, or the heads in order to uh, represent it uh, better in the mural. He uh, here he's showing that organized uh, mural no with this uh, geometrical structure that was inside of the mural. Uh, here uh, it's the representation of a historical uh, episode of Mexico when the Spanish uh, were torturing Cuauhtémoc, which is or was the the last uh, say, king of Mexican culture, uh, Aztec. <laughs> And um, he went, uh, well, the, the, the story is that he was tortured by burning his feet uh, in order to tell the Spanish uh, people that uh, where, was, where was the gold, the rest of the gold or the treasure of, of them. So, well, this is another story uh, of, or, or another concept of the muralism story. No, one is uh, about uh, progress, what is about the context uh, of uh, political and uh, uh, historic uh, sense of understanding. You know? This is another mural that he made, David Rosiqueiros, in the uh, Chapultepec castle. And he is trying to uh, present this development from one uh, time into another after revolution. Uh, is, is, this, is this part and during the revolution and after the revolution, let's say, no, uh, with this uh, sense of modernity and the forms of the persons that were more uh, synthetic. No? This is another mural of Diego Rivera, which is called The Water Source of Life, which uh, actually was very uh, modern and interesting uh, because he decided to uh, paint a complete mural in the in the old technique of fresco, but uh, on top of it was going to be the water running through it, because um, 
the idea is that actually the water is the origin of life. And so he decided to create this, uh, all this mural that represents all of the elements that you can find in the water and the um, microscopic elements that can be found there. But obviously with the time, they began to uh, deteriorate. So they decided not to uh, continue having water running on there. So the mural exists. You can appreciate it in Chapultepec, which is a very nice park in Mexico City. But um, well, you you uh, you can see it there, right? It's very interesting. Now we're going to go after these three main uh, muralists, the three great painters. We're going to see one of the other muralists that actually has a mural too in the uh, Palace of Fine Arts Museum and uh, is Jorge Gonzalez Camarena. Jorge Gonzalez Camarena was one of these um, artists from the next generation of muralism. Uh, and although they were um, coming through muralism, let's say using muralism and presenting all of uh, their aesthetic and ideological uh, positions, they uh, were less dogmatic you know? um, and uh, even though they were um, painting things according to the official culture this mural is divided into three main parts this first one represents the moment when the revolution came and this um, uh, field uh, worker uh, represents the the act of, or the need of the revolution, right? And he uh, actually is painted here as a mummy or a dead corpse, you no, know, that is almost in the coffin. You know? The coffin is this green part. Uh, and at that moment, Mexico was in a state uh, or a psychological state that was trying to understand the that moment that was living. So, uh, after this revolution and and, and uh, confusion or uh, not understanding what happened, let's say, this uh, country began to have a liberation. You know? And this is a, a, a way of, of, of um, imagining this change of this nation. So Jorge Gonzalez Camarena represents the liberation act by this man that is breaking these ropes um, and the movement of his arm, which is represented into three times, one, two, and three over here. No, it, 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 he's representing this moment of moving and breaking these uh, ties in order to uh, be this other part. I'm going to move a little bit over here, this. And here is this new nation. No, uh, the liberation uh, was uh, this process into where this country was going to be a new one and he represented the nation as a woman with a, in one hand a seed a corn seed that means obviously the, the the birth of or the origin of this new 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 country no with a new color with a, it's a, a lot of, with it has a lot of light and it's giving the front and it's open with the hands and with even the legs it are open in, ten, in terms of going uh, towards a new a new uh, um, country, let's say. You know? And so this same artist uh, is the one that created this mural, which is the mural of uh, Tecnológico Monterrey. Uh, Jorge González Camarena created this fight and victory of Quetzalcoatl over Tezcatlipoca or the triumph of culture. Uh, this is uh, the mural that actually is in Monterrey. This is the main building of Rectory at, at this moment. And um, well, he um, trying, tried to represent here uh, the, the process no, of uh, having this change into a new, uh, new country even. Uh, this is another image of this same painting. Um, Jorge González Camarena um, made this mural and it means for 
Tech de Monterrey, eh, the sense of identity and symbolic value of an institution that proposed to contribute to the construction of a nation in the middle of the 20th century through the development of technology, science, and culture. This piece is the rectory mural that eh, at that time was the first library in 1954. I'm going to put a little bit over here, please. This is the library project in 1952. And uh, this meant to be the emblem of a great pride for the graduates of this house of studies. This is Jorge Gonzalez Camarena. Uh, this was the, new, the, 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 the library without a, a decoration. Uh, it was a, a commission that was uh, asked to Gonzalez Camarena after he won a, a contest he actually participated into this uh, competition uh, to in order to uh, realize this uh, create this mural um, we can see here uh, these sketches that he made uh, and obviously he won this contest uh, in order to create the mural this is another letter signed by Jorge Gonzalez Camarena where he describes all of the process that he had to uh, uh, all the symbolic uh, concepts that he tried to represent into his mural. No? So uh, the mural tells the myth of Quetzalcoatl. This is Quetzalcoatl, which was um, for the ancient Aztecs uh, the god well, let's say the beloved. It represented the union of earth and sky. Earth is represented by a snake and sky is represented by the feathers. It was like the feathered uh, snake. It is called Quetzalcoatl. And Tezcatlipoca was considered the dark brother of Quetzalcoatl, god of the invisible and the darkness. Among the Nahuas, Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca are a duality. They are Duality and antagonism at the same time. Quetzalcoatl is also called the Tezcatlipoca Blanco or Tezcatlipoca, white Tezcatlipoca, while Tezcatlipoca is black. These are the two antagonists in this mural where uh, Jorge Gonzalez Camarena tried to represent uh, in a mural that uh, is uh, a painting or and, and a sculpture at the same time. Uh, that uh, tries to show the this triumph of culture. In the middle, uh, here at the upper part, he uh, created an eagle with an outstretched wing, wings. All of the wings are here as a symbol of a Mexican nationality from which the profiles of a man and a woman emerge. These two men, this is a woman and this is a man. This represents humanity. But in the context of a university, these two represents, well, the students and the teachers, no women and men that are creating this uh, space in order to learn and develop science and culture. Uh, they both direct their gaze to these, uh, towards these two uh, fists with uh, that hold some flames of fire that fight uh, against this uh, darkness, which is the Scatlipoca. This character here at the bottom with the mask with black and blue and yellow is the representation of the Scatlipoca. Uh, and this is being continued by this snake, this feathered snake that is called Quetzalcoatl towards the end of the piece on the right side, over here, we can see three different hands. In each hand, we have the representation of technique, technology, let's say. Here, the representation of agriculture, and here the representation of science uh, and uh, culture, because we have a book here too. Those three allegories are the, uh, all of these three compose an allegory of civilization. Now we're going to uh, see a video that will uh, show us a little bit more about 
this uh, these different elements. Well, actually, this mural uh, measures seven meters tall and thirty two point four meters uh, from the large part of the mural. We're going to see this mural in a video that our students uh, made uh, to celebrate uh, one of the most uh, important anniversaries of the Tec de Monterrey, and which the iconographic and iconological contents of the mural are going to be clearly appreciated. Hello. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the mural uh, and this video uh, that represents this uh, process of understanding the ecological contents of this um, mural of Jorge González Camarena. Now we're going to see the case of a mural artwork rescue and uh, the history of medicine painted by Jose Reyes Mesa. The case of this mural uh, it's interesting because uh, it was made uh, for um, a special uh, corporation that is called Farmacias Benavides. Um, it's not so well known for the community in the Tec de Monterrey, uh, but uh, we can say that um, Reyes Mesa is considered a part of the generation of continuing artists of the School of Mexican Painting Hairs and the ideals and pictorial, pictorial canons of muralists such as Diego Rivera, David Alfredo Siqueiros, and Jose Clemente Orozco. His early years were influenced uh, by nature and food of his native Tamaulipas, uh, which were also framed by Mexican revolutionary ideals of the late 20s whose cultural research was to promote nationalism. We already seen in the other murals, right? Therefore, the essential function of a mural uh, for him uh, should have, uh, that, that should have, uh, was uh, in addition to integrating the architecture of the building, was to educate and to show from a historical and political or social perspective, some visual narrative that would lead to understanding or awareness of the national identity. Reyes Mesa was interested in all of this and accompanied by a didactic uh, intention about the function of the building where a mural would be created with an almost renaissance uh, humanistic sense of well-being and beauty. This piece belonged to a building originally belong, um, created to uh, Farmacias Benavides and which uh, became part of the group of property of Tecnológico Monterrey acquired in 2001. Despite not having any technical file or identified um, element, uh, it remained into an excellent state of preservation. And it was made on a concave uh, wall using the fresco technique in 1969. It was made in the lobby of the building C of Campus Norte uh, or North Campus, how it is called uh, that part. Uh, the theme of the work uh, addresses the story, the history of medicine in four main spaces. I don't know if you can uh, look, but uh, appreciate here, we, we can see one first element. Uh, this is the second, the third, and the fourth. This is a real, uh, somehow connected no, with this part, but it's the, it is divided into four, four stages, let's say. Um, the reading has a journey from left to right, from where, from where you can see uh, the indigenous doctor Martin de la Cruz here, uh, who wrote the first herbal treatise in 1552, uh, known as Badiano Codex, uh, which one translate, was translated from Nahuatl into Latin by Juan Badiano. Okay, so he, Juan Badiano, is the one that is uh, giving you know, to uh, the Spanish or the European, uh, let's say, uh, humanity, a part of humanity, this, uh, uh, this trade 
no, between two cultures. Uh, and well, in this first section, uh, it described how the indigenous protagonist gives or shares to an European uh, this of uh, this codex and some medicinal herbs in a symbolic act of meeting of two cultures. Um, obviously, we can see here all of these elements that are represented by uh, these traditions of uh, this medicine, uh, this indigenous medicine that uh, obviously has a, a, an important background for people from Me uh, Mexican people, especially uh, because of the it, because it, it, it's somehow knowledge that uh, in modern times we probably don't uh, consider that important but uh, it's at the same time culture and uh, medicine. Uh, so we can see here in the middle too, uh, this alchemist, uh, European alchemist, which is the other side of the coin, let's say, no, they are, uh, uh, in Europe there, it's a long tradition too, of uh, using alchemy to uh, find the, the solution of many of the problems they they understood they had as uh, something uh, not uh, uh, that came from somewhere that I, they didn't understand very well, right? So chemistry and alchemy was something that is it was related and at that moment, no? And well, uh, we can see here at the top uh, this this part where uh, is developing a third block where it takes us to Greece and the Western medicine with two sculptures. One of Apollo, the Greek god of logic, reason, and healing, and Esculapio, the god of medicine, who had the gift of healing through medicinal plants. Iconographically associated with a staff uh, and a snake, that it's surrounding this wound. Um, in the background of the last part of the painting, you can see uh, the Cerro de la Silla, this mountain here, which represents Monterrey. This is a mountain that uh, it is called Cerro de la Silla or the horse chair mountain. This is like the translation somehow, which is, is very symbolic and very representative of Monterrey, and especially because the Farmacias Benavides are from this part of Mexico. And obviously, uh, he is uh, connecting all of these uh, places and elements related to Farmacias Benavides. Here is the representation of this um, Drogueria del Carmen, which is the first uh, branch that Benavides family acquired in 1917. Uh, in the following shots, you can see the drug production process, all of this drug production, uh, that begins in the central segment with a full body portrait of Felipe Jesus Benavides. This guy here is the founder of the Benavides organization. So this work is a synthesis of the history and mythology of ancient and modern medicine represented in different scenes raging, raging ranging from pre-Hispanic medicine to the development of medical science over here. In February uh, 2019, to the imminent uh, demolition of this uh, building, the original building is Campus Norte, that's, that I told you, uh, steps were taken to rescue the work relocate it and thus preserve the painter's legacy for future generations. With the support of the engineer uh, Victor Gutierrez Saladro, the vice president of the North region and through the management of Raul Santiago, director of physical plant in Monterrey campus. In coordination with cultural heritage head office, uh, this work was offered to the School of Medicine, which was well received by the Dean of School of Medicine, Jorge Valdez Garcia. As a safeguard measure, the work was dismantled with a, a detachment tear-off technique known as trapo. This is the place where 
the mural was originally created. It's a concave mural, and uh, this, uh, this building was going to be demolished. So we decided to rescue the mural, obviously, and try to uh, relocate it in a place where it has a, lo a lot of more sense. No? In this case, the School of Medicine was uh, the, the best place to relocate it. So this uh, technique is called strap. The work was dismantled with the detachment or tear off technique called the strap. So this technique is, is uh, this process is considered of separating the color layer from the different flattened uh, that contained it and providing it with a technical condition to transfer it into a new support. So the first part is to uh, uh, place uh, this tissue, these long pieces of tissue, uh, with um, uh, this glue, this natural glue that is called a tail, a rabbit tail. And uh, after we put these big uh, layers, we have to put another big layer of bigger and uh, rougher uh, and thicker um, uh, tissues. Uh, in order to support this uh, this painting, because the, the idea is that uh, these tissues are going to um, contain the, the color, the painting, the, the last part of the mural that was painted is going to stick onto this, this um, tissues. So um, we have to place all over the painting. And after uh, trying to uh, let the um, dryness of the of the tissues um, make the paint uh, fall a little bit off. Uh, they were trying to take it off, but they couldn't. So they had to destroy the mural, the, the wall behind the mural. Uh, and after that, they began to let the, um, the, the painting uh, tear off. So it began to go like this, as you can see here. Uh, you have to roll up this this uh, painting as if it was a literal a, like a tissue you know, that you can roll up and uh, finally the complete mural went off into this roll so this is the the, the last part let's say of this uh, turning off the mural then they had to be transported or translate um, transported into another uh, surface where they could take off all of these different um, uh, not even uh, materials or rests of the of the wall in order to have this a little bit more flat no and have it uh, more even this is how the the wall ended up without the mural and we can see here the um, the mural completely uh, uh, flattened well almost flattened but they had to um, place on top of it uh, wet tissues in order to uh, make it a little bit a little bit softer again, and uh, let the paint again go back into a new support. So they began to uh, wet it again you know, with different uh, materials. They had to put on top of it a uh, gesso, which is this um, supportness of. Um, material that will that will be adding again a little thick a little bit more uh, thickness into the the mural then they had to put these tissues to continue let this uh, uh, mural uh, wet let's say and after that they had to well they, they had to turn it off uh, turn it down let's say and uh, they had to uh, take off little by little uh, the tissues that were um, pasted on top of the of the color of the paint. So we can see here how they are taking off this. They are peeling off the the tissue the the, the thinner tissues that were uh, pasted on top of the of the color, and then. The, the white part of the mural that was placed uh, on top of it, and then the other side with the color is going to be pasted on top of this um, mural. Well, the support, the new support. 
In this case, it's a, a structure that it's made of a metal and it has to represent again the same curvature of the um, of the mural where how it was originally being done and then well obviously it was pasted now they it had to be transferred with these uh, layers and um, they had to be uh, very careful in order to uh, add the the exact thickness of the material that will be received receiving the the new the, the mural with the tissue right so the mural when it was finished had to be transported uh, with uh, this uh, tool into the uh, school of medicine this is where it was uh, when, when it arrived then when it uh, was uh, restored all these little pieces of paint that went off when the painting when was the tore off and well they had to repair it now this is how it ended up and as it right now uh, is being what can be appreciated in the school of medicine right now this is a, trans a fresco that is transportable and uh, we don't have any more this problem of uh, having to uh, you know make it this big uh, process of restoration we can take it off and place it wherever we need to be uh, we need no uh, these works were carried out thanks to the experience of the restorer jacobo garcia cruz a coordinator of mural work of the national center of conservation and registry of movable artistic heritage of the imba or the national institute for fine arts uh, you, and well, uh, just for uh, a closure with uh, Jose Reyes Mesa, uh, he was one of the last muralists of the Mexican avant-garde uh, who gained special importance in Monterrey, uh, where he lived in the last stage of his life and carried out various works and exhibitions. His work can be found in public and private collections, mainly in Mexico and the United States. The institutions that have this work, uh, his work, uh, are the National Museum of History, the Senate of Mexico, the National Polytechnic Institute, um, the Secretariat of Communications and Transportation, the Public Registry of Property and Commerce in Mexico City, and the State of Mexico, the Phoenix Art Museum, and Alpha in Monterrey. So, uh, well, Jose Reyes Mesa, as well as uh, Jorge Gonzalez Camarena, were two uh, very two important muralists that led us a legacy that. Uh, we have the, the fortune to have a, as a part of the collection in a, the um, Heritage Head Office of, at Tecnológico Monterrey. Uh, so uh, I am very thank, thankful with you. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this chat and this, uh, tour, this, this guided tour uh, through this uh, muralism uh, and our little bit of uh, art history uh, from Mexico and uh, these two legacies we have here at Tecnológico Monterrey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Seth Saldivar, for your awesome and exquisite presentation. We are going to continue with question and answer session. Question number one, the murals always have to have a teaching or doctrinal pose. Juan Carlos, can we open the microphone for Lisette Saldivar, please? Hello. Uh, well, uh, actually, um, the first muralists, uh, the original, let's say, uh, they used to 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 be very doctrinal, you know, and and the and the murals always try to represent. Uh, sort of a, um, a review of history or a, a political a position that they used to have and they thought the the mexican people should embrace you know, as workers or as field workers but uh, there were many muralists that often were uh, not as doctrinal as those as them uh, they 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 were like not that famous 
And so um, they were not uh, working uh, hand by hand with uh, the, the government, let's say. And that's why uh, we talked about just the three big, which were the, the ones that uh, the government embraced that as the most important. But there are other muralists that actually uh, are or have been painting or, or painted many um, buildings, but with not that um, main topic. But the main three, they used to. Okay, thank you. And what is the meaning of the snake with the Sculapio? Yes, the, the serpent of Sculapius uh, is associated with um, this condition of the snakes of changing uh, skin. And it means somehow re reju rejuvenation. <laughs> and so um, the 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 idea of a uh, Sculapio that had uh, the serpent as a, a symbol of resurrecting uh, dead people, no, it was one of the, the elements that is associated with medicine, actually. Well, uh, I think that we have no more questions. So now, thank you very much. Now Maggie Espino Barros is going to continue with the closure of this session. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Evelyn. And thank you so much, Lisette Saldivar, because this presentation was wonderful, was very explicit. Also, the people in here it's uh, like it very much. And we wanted to make the questions and everything because we are going to have this session in the web page. So many other people can look at it and see all this wonderful and very important information about muralism. And the way you take us, took us from the beginning of what does muralism mean and what takes us to get to the mural of tech and the mural of the medicine that we have in the School of Medicine and Health Sciences, I mean, it's, it's very rich. Thank you, thank you so much, Lisa. You're welcome, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, on behalf of Tecnológico de Monterrey, a School of Medicine and Health Sciences, we thank you all for your participation and we invite you to continue participation in this annual meeting of Universitas 21 Health Sciences Group Tomorrow at 12 Central Daylight Time, we will have the Healthy Mexican Cuisine activity. So you are all invited. Have a great day and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. en Sonora vestida con el mar de Cozumel con el color del sol por todo el cuerpo así se lleva México en la piel como el buen tequila de esta tierra o como un amigo en Yucatán aguas calientes deshilados o lana tejida en Teotitlán Así se siente en México, así se siente en México Así como unos labios por la piel Así te envuelve México, así te sabe México Así se lleva México en la piel La sierra de Chihuahua, o la artesanía en San Miguel, remontar el cerro de la silla, si se lleva a México en la piel, como acompañarse con mariachi.
Thank you so much, Juan Carlos. Gracias a ustedes, aquí estamos. Gracias, Juan Carlos. Gracias, Eva. <risa> Nada. Gracias, que sí. <risa> ¿Mande? Es todo por hoy. <risa> de de <risa> Sí, de hecho. Bueno. bueno. Bye. 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 Bye, gracias.